Hey everybody, welcome to the quick live stream. So we're gonna do a demolding. Uh, yesterday we poured some pine cone blanks and I thought it'd be kind of fun to demold them. I've already pulled them from the pressure pots, uh, but I haven't, I honestly haven't really given them much of a look. So uh, I'll pretty much be seeing them uh, as, as much as you guys are uh, right off the bat. So let me switch views real quick so I can show you what we got. So uh, we did some, uh, Steve and Daniel sent in a bunch of pine cones a long time ago. Let me move my camera thing so I can see what I'm, see what my aim is like. So we did a couple of pen blank, three blank pen blank molds. Um, not sure. We I think we did turquoise, phoenix, orange, and pink in this one. Is that right? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. But I do know that this was black pearl and blurple. Um, and then we did kind of different pine cones. So these ones, and I don't even know exactly which ones. He had them labeled in the bags. One of them was like a sequoia cone, one of them is an alder cone, and one of them was like spruce with, uh, this one was the spruce, and it had like a white dusting on it, which since we put, um, you know, colored mica in there, I don't know that the, the white dusting is even going to show up. I also added, so one of them, whichever one was, uh, we did the mini pine cones as well. This is the, the same mix as this. And we also did a pipe, and I think this is the actually the one that had... Phoenix orange, pink, and uh, apple green, and then we added some silver. So we did a few different things, and this one's the, the mini pine cones. So uh, we'll, we'll get those demolded. I'm going to stop real quick. Before we demold them, I'm going to hold you guys in suspense <laughs> for a second. Uh, but I'm just going to see who's in the chat. Lots of people just showed up. That's cool. So a little bit late today, uh, I had to, to deal with some stuff at home, and then my dad was at the shop when I got here, so I talked to him for a while, and you know how it goes, it's four o'clock now. So <laughs> end of the day, uh, we'll get something demolded. Uh, but let's see here, so I saw Jen was here, she was here first, Doug too, and Gage, what's up man? Uh, let's see, Melvin's here, Daryl, Billy's here, and Rich, lots of people. Let's see, and Art just showed up, nice. Awesome. All right, so let's see. Uh, sandstone and burl pin. Ooh, I'm not like. Was it actually like rock, like sandstone? Is that like like a what is that? Is it like a, a stone material? That's crazy. Nice. Uh, just making sure I'm not missing any comments or questions. Kid Cooper's here too, and Kim Tippin, what's up? Mike McEwen, man, everybody's showing up. So it's a good thing I didn't start demolding because people just keep coming. Uh, lots of you guys, so thanks for joining the fun. I, I, I think everybody, it seems like people like seeing the demolding. It's kind of a nice quick one, uh, as long as I don't talk too much. <laughs> so why don't we start demolding some stuff? And Tony says, love your videos. Thank you, I appreciate it. I need to get on some videos right right now there's not going to be videos for a little bit uh, i might do like maybe a quick tips thing coming up but this weekend is not going to have a video either i'm i'm in the process of working on things uh some some projects that i've been meaning to do for quite a while uh, but the problem is there's like there's that planning stage and then i'm also waiting on other people and materials and things and so we're kind of at a like a little bit of a standstill on just the normal videos, but I'm obviously I'm going to keep doing the the streams. Um, those are really fun and, and easy for me to just kind of turn the cameras on and I can get you know actually get things going. Videos take a little bit longer, especially if you if you're like planning something out and you don't have videos already in the in the pipeline sitting there. So it'll be a little bit on videos, but I, I might try to. Uh, toss something in, come up with like something that'll be kind of a good quick tips or maybe like a little technique kind of thing that'll be kind of a shorter video. Um, hopefully, so not, not not this weekend, but maybe next weekend we'll get something kind of a little bit of a fill-in, but not 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 just a dumb video. That's the other thing. I don't like making just stupid videos. I, if, I, if I'm going to make a video, I want to make it, you know, a, a fun project or uh, a useful uh, tip or something like that. So let's switch views here. I'm going to switch to this view so that you can kind of see me doing stuff, you know, up here in the, the top corner, but, but you'll get kind of the close-up view down here. So uh, let's do this. I don't know what order they were in. Let's, I think we did this one first. So let's go for that one. I would have liked to uh, heat the molds up a little bit more than I did. We got a little bit of rounded corner here and there, at least in this one, but not a big deal. I'm going to probably just cut that off anyway, but... I like to try and 
heat them up as much as I can. So I usually just kind of give it a tap. I'm, I'm kind of crunching pine cones here, but if you just give it a tap, usually will pull out pretty well. So let's, oh, I know this one was copper, antique copper and turquoise with these pine cones. And I know that there's, uh, the problem with demolding only is there's not a lot to look at necessarily, but you guys can get an idea somewhat of what, you know, the colors are. And uh, I added more pine cones than I needed. What I'm gonna do is take it to the bandsaw and just cut these off and then I'll be able to recast the stuff that's on the top. Cause there's quite a, you know, there's, there's a good amount of material. Um, I could definitely, you know, easily make a, a pen blank or two um, just in a single thing if I cut these guys off. Uh, but everything's looking good. There's no problems, uh, you know. Uh, I know uh, Jen mentioned like uh, like bubbles and stuff, in the, and, and I know other people have some issues with pine cones. The main thing is as long as you dry them out fully, then you shouldn't really have too many problems with them. Um, most of your issues, I mean, realistically, most of the issues with resin casting are either a mi measuring or mixing problem or moisture. <laughs> you know, like those, those three things are usually the, the big ones. And then I'd say maybe the third most likely is you know, overheating or too much, too much volume, you know, pouring too much at once. So let's switch to this guy. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. I, I'm, I forget who picked the colors, but uh, they picked black and the, the blurple, I call it the purple blue to purple color shift. So you should hopefully be able to kind of, kind of see that shifting around. But I, I thought that was a really interesting combination. I've never done black pearl mica powder with the, the uh, blue to purple color shift. Uh, and most of your color shifts and your interference powders, um, they kind of, they pop a lot more with a darker background. That one just popped right out. Um, so this should probably be a pretty interesting mix. Now, I don't know that the black is going to really super pop out. It's going to maybe kind of mix a little bit together, but um, near the, the darker portions and on top of the pine cones, which are dark, um, we should get some really cool looking views, you know, like, like effects, let's say, but I can see, I don't know if it's coming through. Yeah. You guys can see it's, it, you can see the black in there. I'm looking up at my, I can kind of see on my, my monitor screen up there, what you guys can see a little better than, but that thing's looking pretty good. And we didn't get too much corner creep. There's a little bit, you can see there's, it, it kind of sucks away here and there. I can't bend it, but you can, you can kind of see that, but not too bad on that one. That one's a pretty deep one also. And then uh, along with that, I wanted to see what that color mixture looked like with the mini pine cones. So we did a, a single pen blank. So that thing's going to probably be pretty interesting. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to see how well these little mini pine cones um, pop out. And, and even with this one, I guess I didn't really think about it. These are pretty dark pine cones. So we'll have to see, you know, once I cut these up, um, how much of the pine cone you can see. And I think I'll probably cut this slightly. I, that's why I like using the seven eighths uh, slots. That way I can cut the sides and, the, you know, do, do a little bit of shaving off so you can kind of see what's going to be on the inside. Um, the top and the bottom don't necessarily give you a good picture of what the blank is really going to look like on the inside. But pretty, si pretty excited about that one. Not too bad. Good color choices as usual, guys. I'm just going to pop this thing kind of halfway together, get it out of the way. Let's stop real quick. Uh, did they float? No, uh, I didn't see any floating. That's actually a really good question. Um, I, I didn't really think about it too much. That is, that can be a problem. Um, but I, I packed them pretty well. Uh, and so I don't really think, you know, I mean, I can see the pine cones in the bottom of this, if they floated, you wouldn't see anything on the base. Um, but I can see them here and I can see them here. I, I dried these out really well. Um, so I don't think that there was a whole lot of, you know, air or anything that would make them float. And they're really small pine cones. I think the bigger pine cones tend to float more because there's more air that can be in, on the inside of it. And so this one, I kind of, it looks like a lot of silver on the top. I, there's, there is quite a bit. I kind of had a little extra silver left over when I was done pouring, but I think I got, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but I, I got a pretty good color mix. Um, the way, if you didn't see, let's see, is this going to come out easy? Pop it out, pop it out. I'm just going to wipe that off, get the mold release excess off. Um, but the way that I poured this one, I poured, I put in half of the mini pine cones, like filled the, the mold about halfway with mini pine cones, then poured a bunch of different colors, color layers, 
until the resin kind of filled that up and then poured the rest of the mini pine cones or filled it up and then did the same thing. And I think I got a really good color mix in here, at least on the outside. I find that the tube blanks are really tough to tell what they're really going to look like on the inside. And, and you, it's not like you're going to cut this. So they're, they're a tough one, especially if you're, you're a, either way, if you're selling pen blanks, it's tough to be like, oh, look, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> you know, and then you're looking at the outside and it's like, uh, I don't know, maybe. Uh, but once you turn into a round blank, they always tend to look pretty good. And even if you're just making them for yourself, a lot of times it's really hard to tell what you're going to get. Um, I think it's a little easier when you just pour like a brick uh, and then you can cut them on four sides. Seems like a little bit easier to tell, you know, off the bat a little bit what you're going to get on the inside. But I'm really excited about this. And I don't know if you guys can see, but there's, you can see the little pine cones slightly just kind of popping out. And so I think once we start cutting into this, I think this is going to be really cool. So good, good color choices from everybody last night. Uh, but there you have it. So if anybody's just kind of joining the fun, I'll give you another, we'll, we'll do another round of, of the demolding. These were the ones with uh, a little bit of, there was like white stuff on them. I think these might be the spruce cones. Let me actually, I, ha I have the baggies. I think it'll tell me. I think that, yeah, so spruce, white dusted, that's what, and I don't know for sure uh, about this, but this is what the baggies said. And then I, I think that the mini ones are the sequoia cones. Uh, I may be wrong about that, but I think that might be it. And then uh, alder cones, or these are alder cones. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, one of these is sequoia. One of them's alder and one of them's um, uh, spruce. So anyway, we did uh, copper and turquoise. And I'm pretty sure these ones are the spruce cones. Kind of pretty small, uh, but looking pretty good. We did some blurple with some black pearl mica powder in this one. So that should be pretty wicked. I hope that we can see the, the patterns. I hope they pop out uh, pretty well on these. Uh, and then I wanted to do that same blurple and black with the mini pine cones. I'm just gonna call these mini pine cones because that's what most people <laughs> know them as. Not too bad, just a single. I just kind of wanted to see what that would look like. And then the last one, we did a two inch PVC pipe with pink, uh, apple green, phoenix orange, and silver, of course, with the mini pine cones. So not too bad. Uh, I'll get these two bricks cut up and I'll post pictures of, of what they look like uh, on Instagram. And I'm also gonna cut the sides of this one, just kind of cut this thing down and square it up. And we should be able to kind of get an idea of what the, what the inside of this will look like as well. Not much I can do about this one um, besides like turning it. <laughs> so what you see is what you get. But I, I am pretty happy. I mean, even on the sides of the pipe, you can really see a good mix of the colors in there. So I'm guessing that I, I did a pretty good job on the inside of that thing. So not too bad. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut the top layer of this one off and recast it. I was thinking I might, I might just, when, after I cut it off, maybe do one, see how many I can fit, but one or two of these slots and just kind of have a little bit of fun with it. Yeah, purple dusk. I know, it is pretty crazy. Um, uh, sorry, I was reading, reading some stuff. Uh, it is pretty crazy. Uh, I have never been disappointed once. I don't think that I can think of one time where people just picked random colors, you know, the chat. Uh, and I've been doing these streams where people have been picking colors for, I'm trying to remember what year I started. So I started on Twitch. That's when I was doing, uh, uh, that's where I started doing live streams. So, I mean, it's been like four years at least, maybe probably five years of streaming and where people are kind of picking colors and doing stuff. I have never been like, oh my God, this is going to be horrible. Um, they usually turn out pretty cool and I always like it because, you know, me just doing, and I, I, I always, before I started live streaming and doing that stuff and even doing the videos, you know, I, I would experiment with things and play around, but you know, your brain can only, like, I can only come up with certain things. And a lot of times what happens is people pick colors that I would never have put that together. And it's surprising, you know, maybe it's not the most amazing thing, but there's been a few things that we've put together that I'm like, wow, I would have never thought of that. And that is a, like a really awesome combination. So it's actually pretty fun. I, I you know, I like having the, the, the interaction because 
you know, frankly, it takes some of the, you know, me having to come up with these color combinations and, and ideas, it takes it off my shoulders, but it also, you know, uh, if we include everybody, sometimes we get some really interesting combinations that, you know, maybe we wouldn't have thought of. Maybe, you know, even the people in the chat would never have put these colors together, but because it's kind of, you know, independent, uh, we get some pretty cool stuff. So, the cactus blank from the previous dunk. Cactus blank. Um, I don't think we did cactus. I don't think I did any cactus. Um, we did, let's see, I have, I do have, I, I, maybe it was these. So we did the shark vertebrae and the lotus pods. Um, is this, uh, I'm trying, I think this was what we did last, the last time. So let me, let me switch views. And I need to get these things up, I guess. Um, it's tough because we kind of messed around with the shark vertebra. Um, and they're all kind of different. It's kind of hard for me to just put up like one picture. <laughs> Uh, and, and be like, oh, this one's available. Um, but I'll definitely get this one. I think I'll get this one uh, listed. I just haven't got on that yet. So let me switch to, I'll just put it on this view. So this was the, we did kind of graffiti with Lotus Pod. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I actually, there's a demolding video. I, I'm pretty, I did a demolding video last Saturday. If you wanna, if I'm, just to make sure, there's one on my channel. Really happy with how the, the graffiti you know, mixture worked. I mean, just wicked colors. It, it worked perfect. And there, it wasn't even, sometimes when you do that graffiti pour, depending on your timing and everything, sometimes you get quite a bit, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll sink a little bit more than maybe you wanted. And I, there's not a lot of sinking. It was like perfect. The timing was kind of perfect where it kind of just settled out here and there, but um, like made it all the way through, but, but like, and then like hardened right then. So the only thing that's kind of silly is I totally forgot to take, so Steven wrote glow <laughs> on the bottom of that Lotus pod and I totally forgot to take that off. So <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a problem, you know, or anything. I think you're going to turn it away, but it is kind of silly. The other one doesn't have that. The other one's fine. And then these were the shark vertebrae. Um, I don't think I did anything. I mean, it, I, we didn't do Choya cactus, so I, I don't know what, what cactus it might have been. Um, but I tried a couple different things. I put these ones in flat and sideways, which is not the typical way that most people make these. So you can kind of see how they were sitting. This is, uh, let's see, the, this one is the more typical, how you see them arranged kind of like, like a you know, vertebrae uh, in, in line. So that's kind of the more normal way of you see people making these. And then this one ended up, it was a three blank mold. So you have a little bit of both. Um, you have some vertical, um, the question is, I'm not sure how far in on a pen blank, you know, how much of this you'll get, but I, th I think it'll work. So pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. So let's see here. So that's about it. Just wanted to, uh, just wanted to share that demolding with you guys. Like I said, I'll get the, I'll get these things cut probably tomorrow. Um, I, I, I messed around. I had things going on all day, so I'm not going to get a whole lot done at the shop. And there's a couple things that I need to make. So tomorrow I'll get these things cut up. I have a bunch of other blocks to cut up as well. Uh, and then I'll get pictures up on Facebook and Instagram of the ones that we, you couldn't really see inside yet. Uh, but it should be pretty fun. So let me stop real quick before we wrap things up and make sure I'm not missing anything here. Any questions or comments or all that kind of good stuff? Mm hmm I wish, yeah, I can't cut them up right now. It, it just, it ends up, the problem is I have a process of how I do all that stuff and I got a bunch of blanks that are in line first. So it, I can't really do it right now. I'll get them up, I'll get pictures up tomorrow though. Uh, is it best, so Dominic's asking, is it best to use a bandsaw or table saw? So, um, and I think somebody answered that, you know, a well-tuned bandsaw does fine. The thing is, even a well-tuned bandsaw, Typically, what I find is you're going to get a little bit rougher cut. Um, I, I find a table saw to be a little bit easier to get a little bit smoother. Um, however, that also is coming from my experience. I have a pretty good cabinet saw. Um, so in that case, if, if I think a lot of people, if you're using like one of the really cheap table saws, I might actually say the band saw might actually even do better than, than a really cheap kind of 
you know, uh, the, 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 the non, <laughs> I guess the contract, like the cheap, the super cheap contractor saws, those things don't really cut that smooth. Um, and so at that point, I think I'd probably just pick a bandsaw over that uh, well-tuned bandsaw. So, yeah, and you do, yeah, that's a good point, Mike. Uh, you lose less on the outside depending it's but i i mean you, you can say that but you're kind of we're, we're you i'm well i'm using a thin kerf blade so it's three sixteenths versus you know probably like an eighth kerf maybe or something like that three or i don't know what the kerf is on a bandsaw blade actually but it's not that much that you're going to lose necessarily but you will lose a little bit more on a on a saw blade cut let's here. Oh, it's yeah. I saw stop. Well, saw stops are really good saws. Um, this was the thing, you know, a lot of people, there's, there's always like this kind of argument. That it seems like people argue about like the safety thing and, and, and there's political things with that. But you know, the truth is I was looking at these things and I, I had a really junky, um, cabinet or, uh, contractor saw before I bought that. And it just, it was a piece of junk. Like it sucked. <laughs> And I wanted to do, I was trying to make like fine furniture and like a, a good cabinet saw is just a lot easier to get good results with. Um, the, like the heavier duty ones, they're just, there's less vibration and more power and all that kind of stuff and everything just kind of works better. And so I looked at them uh, and this was, you know, like 10, like 15, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago. It was kind of not too long after saw stop came out. And the thing was, my biggest thing was if the saw stop, you know, has the breaking feature and it's, you know, it has the safety stuff, but it's a piece of junk saw, like it doesn't, it doesn't saw very well, but it, but you won't cut your hand off, then it, there's no point, you know, and then I was probably going to go with like a Powermatic or something like that. Um, but the saw stop is a fabulous saw. Like it is one of the best saws on the market. I don't, I haven't looked at them like right now today, but at that point, I mean, it was probably the best saw on the market. Um, I think when I was looking, I was kind of comparing it to the PM 2000, which was a really good saw as well. Um, but I mean, it's a really high quality saw, but it also has that breaking feature. So that's why I decided to go with it. Um, I've had, um, I've had a couple, I, when I was using that contractor saw, I had like a really bad kickback kind of incident, which I know is not necessarily um, the same thing as like, you know, getting your hand in there. But at the same time, if, if you, <laughs> it could have pulled my hand in because it was actually a, a, a wide piece of wood that could have, you know, moved my hand and that kind of freaked me out. And I'm like, you know what, if I can get a saw that's not going to cut my fingers off, if something weird happens, I'm going to go for it. So that's, that's my, my little thing. I'm sure nobody, <laughs> no, you guys didn't ask for that uh, whole thing, but it is a very good saw. I really like it. Um, it has, it has, there's, there's tools in my shop. I really like high quality tools. Um, I like a tool that does the job that I want it to, uh, without like questions, without a lot of maintenance. And frankly, I don't have to maintain that thing. It's been working the same exact as since I took it out of the box for, you know, whatever it is, 10, 10 or 15 years. Um, and there's just a few tools like that. And, and so I, I think that it's a, you know, if you're looking to get a saw, I would, I would definitely look at the, the saw stops. They're a good one. Oh, your sticker. I didn't look at home. I got to look at home. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to, let me write that down right now. Let me, I'm actually going to write that, that down in my little things to do thing. So I don't forget. I'm writing it down right now. Uh, Julie's sticker. All right. So I'll look tonight and I'll let you know. I'll shoot you a message if I don't see it. So let's see here. Sandstone on a bandsaw. Yeah. There's a lot of things that just eat up your blades. Um, some materials are just super uh, abrasive. Uh, some, like some of the blanks that I make when I first got started, sagebrush is, is a, a material. It's like a, a brush bush thing, um, but it's the Nevada state flower. And so that's what actually got me into resin casting. And those things are just gnarly wood. It's like a, like, it's not a, like a tree wood. It's, it's, it's like br little branch bush branches, but they're super hard, like, like abrasive. Um, and then you stabilize it. And so whenever I cut up a batch of those things, like my, my blades pretty much toast. <laughs> Several years of cutting blanks. Yeah. 
I just realistically, the amount of money, I don't know. I, I do a lot more production of stuff and, and I, I just, to me, I, I think that it's going to take way too many years <laughs> for me to worry about the, the amount, the difference in the kerf that I'm cutting off. And in, and I actually process quite a few, but it's just for me, you know, I don't I don't really I don't really tune my bandsaw super super crazy you know good anyway. So I'd much rather just get a smooth surface, and then I don't have to sand anything. I, I guess for me that that's the that's the thing is is the table saw is so much smoother that I can just off the saw I'm done and I can sell them and and they're fine. But if I if I was bandsawing blanks the way the surface that my bandsaw leaves on blanks, I'd have to like sand every one. So at that point, it's not even worth it. <clears throat> so let me, let me just double check and make sure, see if I see any other, man, the thing I, like I scroll down and then if somebody comments, then it goes to the bottom and I lose my place and I don't know where I am. Killing me. You're up after midnight. Oh man. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, well, I actually, so Jen's saying a higher tooth count. I actually don't recommend using a high tooth count to cut resin blanks. Um, it's, you're going to, it's going to dull faster. That's what I found. I, I used to use forest blades and I tried using a, uh, let's see, was it a 60 or 80 tooth? And I did get a pretty decent surface, but I would go through, I'd have to sharpen that blade so much that it just wasn't even worth it. So at this point, all I use is just a 40 tooth combo blade. Um, but I did find, so I'm using a, the, it's a Tenru gold metal and I have a link to it on my tools. I use page on my website. Uh, it's the best band or it's the best table saw blade that I've found even, even for wood. Um, and I used to use forest, which most many woodworkers would claim would, I, I think would agree that it's, it's definitely one of the best brands out there, but the, the Tenru's last longer and they, they're a thinner kerf and they, they leave a better surface. Um, but it's just a 40 tooth. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, I'm going to go to my website and I'll, I'll get you a link to my tools. It's just nvwoodworks.com slash tools, but, um, so there's, there's a link to that. If you want to see which one, uh, I have, Ooh, the, yeah, the PM 66s are nice. I like those. Um, before they came out with the 2000, I was thinking about getting one of those, but then the saw stop came out and then the 2000 and it was kind of between those two for me. Let's see here. Just I'm almost I'm almost to the bottom here. Yeah, with the saw stuff, I have I have blown I haven't blown brakes uh, actually trying to like accidentally cutting myself. I have blown the brake on aluminum a couple. I, I nicked barely nicked my miter gauge. One time, like I just didn't like really look and see. It was it was just so close. I, I needed to move it over <laughs> just slightly, and it was on an angled cut. Blew the brake, uh, and it kind of scared me. And then um, I've hit um, I've hit metal in blanks that I didn't think about. And so for a while there, anything that had metal, I just wouldn't even mess with on that. I would I would actually cut it on the bandsaw. But again, that was one of those things where. If I did a, a batch of honeycomb blanks, I would cut it on my bandsaw and then I'd have to spend, you know, forever sanding the things down to get them just, you know, smooth. And so I finally just gave up and, and, and made sh like, you know, as long as you turn the brake off, you're fine. Um, and they cut, you know, those, those honeycomb, honeycomb blanks, you know, with no problems. You just got to make sure that you remember to turn the brake off. Um, and you also have to, that was one of the things I also chose not to turn the brake off. I didn't want to do that because I bought the saw stop because it would, it had a break, but I finally gave up because it, it was so much more work with pen blanks that had metal in them, sanding and all that stuff that I just gave up. Uh, and it works fine. I just, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a little extra careful when I turn the brake off, let's say. Not to say that I'm not careful anyway. Like all these people, this is the, the, the one argument that I always hated from people that were against saw stops. And they're like, oh, you're just going to, you know, use it, you know, <laughs> unsafely. And I'm like, man, I don't want to find out if the brake works or not. I don't want to stick my hand anywhere near that blade. It scares me, you know. <laughs> so I don't really, I don't really see that argument. I, I'm pretty careful with it anyway, but, you know, let's see here. Oh, two 90 year olds. <laughs> oh no. You haven't missed much. 
Yeah, but Billy, I have never gotten kickback on my saw stop because it has a really good riving knife. That piece of junk contractor saw had no good splitter system. So really, uh, yes, you can get kickback really easy on any table saw if the right conditions happen, but what happened on that saw would never happen on this saw stop. And it wouldn't happen on a PM2000 even, you know. So a good saw is a good investment. Um, I, I just, I think a, a higher quality saws are safer in general, especially with all the safety stuff that even if you don't have a saw stop, um, they're just so much more safe than they were 15 years ago. Just all of them. So, you know. Yeah, I, I write notes on my mic. I have to, I write notes on it, like turn break off if I have aluminum honeycomb ones. You had to send them to their rooms, I don't know. Hey, James Garwood's here. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is a good good idea, Jen, but, uh, you know, it just, even just Alumalite Clear, which is not particularly abrasive, um, it's it'll dull a, a higher tooth count blade. There's, there's less... Um, my theory is they're, they're like smaller teeth and it just, it's easier to get them dull faster on, on a higher tooth count blade. That was just what I found. And, and that was even really before I was really processing a lot of blanks. That was when I first got into this. Um, and it just, I found that they would just dull really fast and I'm like, Ugh, I'm done with this. Um, but, but what I was saying is I also used, I, I used to use forest blades and the high tooth count blade was a forest I also had just their regular uh, Woodworker 2s, which are like a 40 tooth count, um, regular kerf. And even that compared to the Tenru gold medals that I use now, um, the forests would, would dull faster. So the Tenrus are a really good blade. I actually got that tip from Curtis Seebeck. That's what he uses too. Uh, well, so, okay, Melvin's still here. So let me switch camera views. I know I've been... These are supposed to be like really fast and I'm just sitting here talking about saw stops. <laughs> uh, let me switch to the other view and I'll show you what we, what we got here. So here was the, the blurple with black pearl. Um, and we did a, these were like the slightly larger, I'm not sure exactly which cones these were. They're either alder or sequoia, um, but it looks pretty good. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm just hoping that these pine cones aren't too dark and they, like you don't see the pine cone part in this because it's kind of a, it may be a little bit of a darker, you know, blank, but we'll see when I get it cut up. And then I also did some mini pine cones in the same mix of colors. And then uh, I think you saw this one, uh, the copper and the turquoise, possibly, maybe. Or was it turquoise? Yeah, copper and turquoise, I think. And then uh, this was the, the two inch. And we did the green apple, pink, phoenix orange, and silver in this guy. So pretty, pretty cool looking. I, I'm, I'm, I think that I did a really good job. Um, just on the outside, you can see a, a pretty good smattering of all the different colors. So I think the inside of this is going to look pretty cool. So that's what, and then these were from last week. We we're just showing these again. The Lotus pod. You probably saw these and then the shark vertebrae. So there you have it. If anybody's joining the fun a little bit late and didn't see it. Can use JB Weld five minute for a simple inlay. Uh, yeah, you could do that. I think the only problem with like a five minute epoxy is air bubbles would be a little bit easier to get. I, I find because you have to kind of stir up five minute epoxy and it's a little bit thicker and it's setting up so fast that air bubbles are pretty common in that. So maybe if you're kind of slow mixing it, uh, you, you might be able to, and you might even be able to kind of, you know, use like a lighter. Don't, I probably wouldn't recommend using like a torch, um, but like a, a little bit of heat might help uh, thin that out a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Next. 50 inch PM 64B. I don't even know what that is. Is that like a one of the um, is that like one of the European style uh, panel saws? I don't know what that one is. I haven't really been into like looking at that kind of stuff because I don't do flat work really ever. 
and for and i have enough tools to do that kind of stuff so i like i haven't really even looked at anything that's on the market for a long time i'm, I'm a lot more turning uh, oriented at this point I'm trying to think of other tools. I, I am keeping my eye. I, I would like to replace my bandsaw, my, my 18 inch. I hate that thing. I'm just, I'm literally, I'm just like kind of halfway praying. It just blows up and the, the motor falls off and it just disintegrates to dust someday. So I have an excuse to replace it. But the thing is like, it works fine for what I do with it. So I'm not gonna spend the money on one. But, uh, let's see here. Thanks for joining the fun, Purple Dusk. Glad you could come out. And I hope you sleep well. Too, you're editing again? Oh, man. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of late nights editing myself. Uh, can I turn that crushed... Cr yeah, you can turn the cultured opal. Um, that's one of the nice things about it. It's, uh, this is one of the like marketing points that, that Scott always says. That stuff's uh, a pretty low... He, he always brings up the Mohs, M-O-H, um, scale. It's really not that hard. And so carbide tools definitely handle it. I think high-speed steel uh, will handle it fine. Might be a little bit more, you might have to sharpen a little bit more. Like it's a little bit more abrasive than like alumilite would be, but it's not super abrasive. So yeah, you can totally turn that stuff or just sand it if you want, depending on like, like on a ring, a lot of times there's really no need to actually turn the thing. Um, so you can just sand it in that case, but it does really well. That's that, that cultured opal is a, a good material for people like us because it, it's toolable, machinable, toolable. That's not a word. <laughs> it's very easily machinable and sandable. So cool. Yeah, kind of midnight. Yeah, it is. I, I just I really love that blurple stuff. That's why I bought it. Um, you, you know, like technically I could go out and buy, you know, a bunch of different color shift powders by the kilogram and, and, and offer all this stuff. I don't really want to have to package all that stuff up, but um, the reason that I only sell that blue to purple one is I love the way that it looks. It's, it's got a lot of really good useful things. And so I was going to buy it in kind of bigger quantities anyway. And I figured why not just package some up and sell it. And that way, you know, you guys know exactly which one I'm using on the show and, and you can just snag that as well. So. Yeah. Oh, just a hybrid saw. That's cool. Yeah, the, well, the hybrid saws are pretty nice. I just, those, the ones that are just those super cheap contractor saws that, like, don't even barely have a base. <laughs> it's got, like, an aluminum foil base, and it just wobbles, and ugh, that is a, I just, those things scare me. I don't like them. Uh, the, the, the hybrid saws, I, I looked at those as well, but I could afford a cabinet saw and for what I had planned in my mind when I bought it, I really wanted to get, um, cause that in, in, in like a, you know, like a traditional woodworking shop, a lot of times the table saw is kind of the main tool that you're using. It, it kind of is what you do a lot of joinery, a lot of fine stuff as well as, you know, cutting down things. Um, and I really wanted to have something that was a really good saw. So that's why I went with that. Yeah. Did you, what was Art's question? Did I miss it? Why did he stop? Art. Uh, I'm scrolling, I can't see it. Yeah, in general, I do try to see questions. On, on a normal stream, uh, I miss a lot of them. I can't, I can't keep my eye on the, the chat the whole time. Uh, uh, no, you don't need to use a lot of that, that color shift powder. That stuff is pretty expensive. That's, that's one of the drawbacks to it, but you don't really need a lot. Um, a little bit goes a long way. I actually, less is more for, so I have a video that, that shows the, it's like an Aurora effects. It's actually the one, if you just go to my channel page, it's, it's always up there. Um, it's a really cool technique. And so that's why I, I have that one kind of pasted there. Um, you use very little if you're just going to add that only to clear and get kind of a like an aurora uh, borealis kind of effect. You actually you don't want to add too much because then it turns kind of milky white. Um, if you just add just enough, and I actually have a like a recipe. I think it's a one eighth per two hundred grams, one eighth teaspoon per two hundred grams. I think, and so that's like a very tiny amount of, of powder. Um, for this, we added probably like a quarter teaspoon, um, which. Honestly, I probably could have added just an eighth, 
that probably would have done just fine. So you don't really need a lot. Um, one thing that I like to, to uh, something that adds a lot of pop is just add a little bit of the Illumilite purple dye, just, just like a drop. Um, that'll also help kind of uh, really pop that, that, that powder out and get you some really cool results. But it also works best if you're going for a very, um, you know, vibrant blue to purple color shift, you, you really need like a dark background be, behind it. So, um, but if you're going for kind of a see-through Aurora effect, you really need a little tiny, tiny bit. So. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is, Art. <laughs> I can't see it. You guys don't need to fight. No need to fight. Jeez. I like you guys both equally well. Let's see. But I can't find the question. I don't know where it went. Um, let's see. How high was it? It's hard because there's just so many things. Uh... Oh, are, am I ever going to have someone on the phone talking to you? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, for it, and that's why I do the Patreon things, that the, the monthly live Q&A hangouts. For people that really need questions ans answered, that's the place to do it because I'm, I'm specifically focused on questions for half the thing. These, these normal live streams, this is actually kind of rare. I don't usually stand here and answer questions on the normal one. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's more about, you know, sharing what we do, getting some different blanks and, and all that stuff. But I'm not, it's not really, I'm not focused on answering questions during that. Um, just when, you know, but I do like to answer questions when I see them, but I'm not, I, I usually won't go and scroll through and, and check every question out. It's just, it's not the place. That's, that's what Patreon's for. So. <laughs> Which ski run? Actually, my, my, uh, my wife's father um so father-in-law the problem is he had passed away before we got together so that's why it's kind of a, i said it kind of weird but he it was actually his so i'm not entirely sure but i would have to guess that it's at heavenly because uh, that's uh, like 15 minutes away from where we live and where they lived so we found it in i, I got a toolbox full of tools from him uh kind of passed down from from my mother-in-law uh and that was in there and i was like oh that's perfect so i had to put it up <laughs> So probably heavenly, uh, but it could have been somewhere else, maybe maybe Kirkwood. So anyway, guys, I got to get going because I got to get some work done. So again, uh, thank you guys, everybody who super chatted and helped out with the colors yesterday. And uh, thank you guys all for joining the fun. I will get pictures on Instagram and Facebook once I get, I'll get these things cut up tomorrow, these, these two bricks. And I'll probably just, you know, take a couple cuts on this one and kind of square it up so we can kind of see what this looks like on the inside. Uh, won't do anything. I'm not going to do anything with this one. Probably. Um, I, I'm actually pretty, this thing's going to be pretty cool. I don't, I actually personally, I don't need to even cut into this to, to tell what the, what's going to go on on the inside. Uh, this one should be cool, but I don't want to like, I'd have to chuck it up on the lathe and, and like take a layer off. I'm not going to do that. So, uh, be looking for picture, <clears throat> excuse me, for pictures tomorrow on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to, to follow me over there if you're not already so you get, uh, so you get to see those things. And then uh, let's see. So next week, I'm still working on the, the lidded box, uh, the little the faux pine cone lidded box. Um, I've done a little bit of sanding. I'm going to try and get that base, you know, like fully sanded up and, uh, and kind of ready to go. And then on Wednesday, we'll work on the lid. So we'll have to kind of fit that to the base. And, and, and kind of finish up the box for the most part. Um, hopefully I can get it all done. I, I'd like to also turn a finial. So I'll, I'm gonna have to kind of think about how much time it's gonna take me to do that on Wednesday. I may start doing some work on the lid. Um, it, <laughs> if, if anybody that was watching me mess with this box, I'm actually gonna say that it might be smarter for me to just fit the lid and get everything ready um, on my own before we start that because it's just gonna be like, probably not awesome to watch. <laughs> so I'll be able to kind of take my time, make sure everything's good on that. Um, and then uh, we'll just kind of finish that up. Hopefully we can fit the finial in and, and do all that stuff. So I'll kind of have to, to play with that, see how much time it's going to take. But Wednesday, we'll kind of hopefully finish that little box up. 
It's looking pretty good right now. I've got it up to about a thousand grit on the inside and out, and it's looking pretty pretty awesome on the base part. Uh, and then Friday next week is going to be the the Patreon live Q and A and hangout. Um, uh, so on Friday, so it's going to be for, for patrons only. Um, and then I'll be, like I said, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, we do the, the, that once a month for patrons. And so the second, I do a little demo resin casting thing at the beginning. And then the second half of that is what I was saying. It's, it's me just hanging out, looking at the chat. My, my total focus is on just hanging out with you guys and answering questions. It's especially for people that are casting and, you know, have some issues or, or questions about how to do stuff. Um, I want to be kind of available and be able to answer every question because I just can't do that all the time on the normal one. Um, and then what I do though, is I'll take out, I'll, I'll edit out the, the demo part, that resin casting thing. And then I'll put that up on the YouTube channel for everybody to see, uh, later, just cutting out all that Q and a stuff uh, that most people probably don't really want to listen to necessarily. So anyway, guys, I will see you all on Wednesday. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. And, uh, yeah, so it's um, getting hot in certain parts of the country and, I don't know, maybe a little humid for you. But hopefully uh, you'll be able to get out in the shop and do some, some fun stuff, either turning or some casting or, or whatever you're doing. So hopefully you guys will get some shop time uh, the rest of the weekend. So I will see you guys all on Wednesday. Have a great evening.